Hello and welcome back to the Talking Wolves podcast. We are live from Barcelona. We're still here and I'm joined by Dave. Dave, how are you? I'm good, mate. How are you? Tired. Tired. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a long journey, hasn't it? It's been a long trip. It's always the same. It is European nights and days, though, isn't it? It's, you know, we got here yesterday morning, um, or at least the afternoon, got here about two o'clock, but we'd left the house at like four, didn't yeah. we? So, yeah. get, going straight to the game and stuff. It does take it out of you, but we're here for... A, Another night, hopefully, um, get to La Rambla and La Rambla, uh, La Rambla and paint the town gold. Um, right. But this is another podcast, basically, going to kind of round up um, the Espanol game and uh, Wolves' Europa League last 16 draw. Uh, but we'll start with that Espanol game, Dave. It was um, it was disappointing, really, wasn't it? Um, yeah, the performance as a whole was, was pretty disappointing. Um, but I don't really know... Um, I didn't really know what to expect, to be honest. I think it was pretty obvious that Nuno was going to be rotating a couple of players. And when you've got a 4-0 deficit, sometimes it can be um, not difficult to motivate the players, but it's difficult to get them on their top game because you're almost in the back of their minds, regardless of how good your management is. The players are always going to know the game's almost done. So there were good spells, there were bad spells. Uh, there were spells that Nuno will be happy with and there will be spells that he wasn't, he wouldn't be happy with. So there will be lots of work on that. Um, but I think one of the key things is despite us losing we're through to the next round and we, we've been able to rest a couple of players ahead of uh, the big Spurs game on Sunday yeah obviously the biggest thing was qualifying and, and, and going into the next round but I think if we were to play in a, 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 the game against a team who were a, a bit more superior than Espanyol you know say if we, that was we were falling up against Inter Milan I know it, it yeah. sounds ridiculous but Going to the San Siro and, and playing like that, there's a very good chance that we could have been beat. But it's all if buts and maybes, isn't it? And I'm talking about podcasts, you know, the absolutes. <laughs> so, uh, I can, yeah, I can, I can see your point, but I think um, if it was a, team, I can see your point, but yeah, you know. but yeah, <laughs> uh, but I think with a team like Inter Milan uh, or Manchester or, or whatnot, you, I think with a team in es- Espanol's form. Um, You'd be really disappointed for anyone actually in the competition for Wolves to chuck mm. away a four goal deficit. So I think we were able to do that. Um, people are disappointed by the defeat and thinking we shouldn't lose there. But say for our, you know, we've got teams such as, you know, whoever the team in, in seventh, eighth position, say you've got your Getafe, there's every chance they could go there on a, on a Sunday or whatever in the league and lose that game as well. So, you know, there's plenty of ups, there's plenty of downs, but at the end of the day, I think we all knew the result was done after after the first leg anyway. Yeah, so talk me through the team selection. Started with Traore and Pedence up top, Gibbs White came in for Nevers and then Don Kerr and, and uh, Martino in, in the three. Kilman came in for Sace and then obviously Johnny's injured, so... We had Vinagra, but as soon as I saw the team, I looked at the first thing I, I thought of was those, those front two and thought, it's not going to work. Yeah, um, I think you're right as well. And I think um, we, we, we've performed pretty well this year, especially since January as well, to be fair. And I know uh, the January transfer window got a lot of stick. Um, and, uh, but I did, again, it did show today that outside of Jota and Jimenez, uh, we, haven't, we haven't got a striker. Um, Adama is a good player by all means, Pedenti is a good player as well, uh, but neither of them are strikers, you're not going to get them. It, it, fair play, if you're chasing a game by a goal or two and you want someone on the last man to run and, and counter-attack, then fair enough, but when you're asking two players there that aren't, aren't strikers to hold up the ball, bring other players into play, uh, try and get the ball and drive forward and, and get a positive strike on goal, it, it ain't going to be Pedence and it's not going to be a Dharma Troy or Ray. So, yeah, as I said, Pedence, Pedence got two assists. He was good. He, he did what he needed to do. But both of them only ro- sort of thrived almost in wide positions where they're both, you know, capable of and comfortable in playing. Pedence got two assists from wide positions. Yes, the Dharma did score, but um, not throughout the 90 minutes. Um, yeah, it it isn't it isn't strong enough, and yeah, they're they're not bad players as I say, but yeah, they're definitely not strikers anyway. I mean, going forward, uh, our our biggest threats really were coming from from Doc and Vinagre. I thought Doc had quite a good game. He was a, a constant constant yeah. threat going forward. Um, Vinagre showed some really nice touches, especially um, in in the first half. But I don't know, as there was too many players who had a five or six out of ten. I mean, Bolly, Mister Mister Dependent, and he was so. Lackluster and so careless with the ball. Just, which, yeah, it was sloppy. I, I don't know. I can't remember who it was at the first goal when Bolly came forward. He, him and another midfielder, 
uh, probably Gibbs White. <laughs> um, they 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 went for the same ball and they lost the ball and, and sort of Bolly was out of position there. He got himself back back there uh, to defend, but almost you know off balance and wasn't ready for that. And that's that's where that first goal came for them. Um, but yeah, well, he was a bit sloppy at times. Um, but I don't think that midfield three sort of almost like a you could you could say makeshift, but it's not really. You got two of your normal midfield for of the midfield three in there. Um, we yeah, at times it was for Bolly similar to Gibbs White, who I'm sure we'll talk about. It's just almost taking a, a touch or two too many. Mm. Just got to keep it simple. Uh, we didn't need to panic. The game was won. We needed to just chill out a bit and uh, let our football do the talking, which at times wasn't really the case. So we'll, we'll, we'll go on to uh, Gibbs White now. So you just mentioned it. It's uh, it for me it might sound harsh, but he just seems out of his depth. Especially in, in, in the team that he's in. I mean, like he said yesterday, there was a few times where we're playing a bit of one touch football and quite could have quite easily broken Espanyol's press and we could have been away, but he wanted one touch, wanted two touches, wanted three touches and he lost possession. He just you, you can't do that at this level, but we've all said that a low move would have would have suited him and done him the world of good, but whether the club trust him away from Wolverhampton I don't know. But it does look like in the next season, if we don't qualify for Europe on the off chance, then he could go out and loan, but he does look out of his depth. Yeah, and I think, he's just come back from injury. Like, yeah, but. next season will be a big one for Morgan, depending on what happens. To be honest, I think as a footballer, we all know there is something there. There's that that little bit of quality, but is he is he going to find it at Wolves short term? I don't think so. Um, I was actually looking forward to seeing him in the in the starting lineup. But I didn't think uh, he would play, or if he, he wouldn't have started at least. Um, but yeah, he, he just made it too difficult for himself again. Like I said with Bolly, it was a chance. Uh, a little passage of play where Morgan took about four touches and lost the ball where in reality all he needed to do was take a touch and pass it off there's, there's quality there there's flair there's vision you know, some of his passing is great but I just don't know what it is he, I, I think he's trying too hard almost to impress all the time he's, just, he's another one that's just got to start keeping it a bit more simple um, he, when we went to watch the under 23s game him and Bruno Jordao against Liverpool looked different gravy you could tell they were almost at first team level but it's as if you know he does need that full season in the championship now mm. and I think if he gets that next season playing regular football that will define the rest of his career so I think uh, next year is a, a big year for Morgan regardless Can you see him spending that year at Wolves? Well next year um, no I don't think so there's too many there's too many players now um depending on the situations and I think Wolves especially next year depending on if we're in European competition we're not going to wait around for Morgan to grow up you know yeah. if, if he ain't good enough he ain't good enough and um, we'll, we'll sign players and if we are in the Champions League or if we are in the Europa League again I think folks will almost learn from their mistakes of depth and this summer will be a big one and, and spending money and they're not going to keep Morgan just for the sake of it I, I, like I think you sort of alluded to earlier I think the biggest reason they kept him around was because we were in Europe and we needed that extra player and that homegrown, you know, rota, quota and stuff. So, yeah, I think I can't see him here next year. I'd be very, very surprised. But a player of his age, with his talent, he does need regular football. Yeah, I think I don't think Ruben Nevers has got anything to worry about come Sunday. I mean, he's, he's placed his lots from the side. No, I mean, not. he's been nothing short of outstanding the past couple of months. And I thought yesterday we really, really missed him in the middle. We also missed Jimenez as a focal point because, yep. like you said, there was there was periods in the game, you know, we're falling all down, they're going to be chasing the game. We just needed someone just to hold the ball up for a couple of seconds, give Wolves a bit of breathing space and get out the pitch. But every time the ball went forward, it was coming straight back. And that was, that was to be fair, it wasn't just Pedence and Adama's fault. It was a distribution from the back three as well because it was just lump it, see where it goes. There was no... No real kind of proper passing. It was just, all right, clear your lines and get out. But if it doesn't stick, you're never going to get out. Yeah, I, d I didn't really understand that, to be honest. But a lot of the, I think what it was a lot of the time, it was the, the midfield three just didn't really offer the back three much, not protection, but that option all the time. Uh, but I think Espanyol did press quite high. They made it quite difficult for uh, for Wolves to breathe at the back. And I think that's where a lot of their goals, a lot of their goals came from, really. You know, punishing us for... Uh, us being slow on the ball and yeah. you know just making us pay for it really yeah I mean I think that was the worst Bolly performance I've, I've seen in a Wolves shirt and it, and it probably mm, wasn't even time, that, yeah. that bad um, yeah. you know he's like I said he's Mr Dependable he's been a rock since he's come back but it, it, it was poor but Neto came on and we switched to uh, three up top we had 
I mean, it was pretty fluid, wasn't it? They were switching yeah. between, obviously, Pedence and Neto playing up top and um, on, on uh, in a centre forward position. And, and Adama was mostly outside, out, out on the right. But talk me through that miss, Dave. I've watched it back again today, and um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it, I'd assume he's right footed. Um, so it's on his weaker foot, but you know, it's not really an excuse from that distance. He's taking it around the keeper. He's left footed, isn't it? Is he? Yeah. Well, it's his, if he's his stronger foot, that's what he hit it with his left. That's his stronger <laughs> foot, and there is an excuse. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's taking it around the keeper. The defender's on his back, but yeah, he can't. He can't be missing them. It was harder, harder to miss that. And similar to the Abamyang chance that I saw again last night as well, uh, the last minute one that was harder to to miss and get on target. And yeah, I can't believe he's missed it, but. Uh, at that sort of age, I just I think he is pretty driven, uh, Neto, and I think he does know, you know, what he's capable of. So I'm hoping stupid stuff like that doesn't sort of mm. hold him back and stay in his head. He's just got to bounce back when he gets the chance again. Yeah, you time. don't need to dwell on it, do you? Really? And I'm no. sure no, no, I'll have an arm round him saying, "Listen, son, you should be scoring." And he knows it. Everyone else knows it, but. He did so well to get on the end of it, take it around the keeper. Hey, he put the pressure on, like Espanyol were doing to us. He put the pressure on their back three, they made, uh, back back line. They made the mistake, um, and he should have made them pay for it. But I think that that all that'll be one thing that's interesting with Pedro Neto over the next 12, 24 months. His his final decision making and final ball, um, because there have been a couple of times where he he does all the hard work. Mm. I think Villa was the one that stuck out in my mind. We did took on two or three players through and goal. Um, he's either got to put it back in the back of the net or lay off Catrone and he went for the shot and put it wide um, and those sort of chances I mean he's quite lucky on both occasions there that's not really affected the, the result so um, yeah he's just next few the next year or so we'll be interested in see if he can start putting chances away and getting more successful balls into the box then uh, he could become a serious player for Wolves At 2-2 two -two, though that wins the game yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. then Espanyol got the other end and scored. Yeah, still yet to see that Espanyol goal. I couldn't see it. Um, did you? Did you see much? I can't really comment on it, but I know. The, I know the penalty looks soft. I know the first goal was giving the ball away. Yeah. Um, again, I, I'm not really sure what had happened there, but it was it was a hat trick by Callery, which I didn't realise until after the game as well. Um, <laughs> why don't you come on over, Callery? <laughs> uh, you know. oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, he um, got a lot of energy. He, yeah, <laughs> I think he scored. It was a header, I think, um, past Patricia. I think they'll be disappointed with. But like I said earlier on, I think there's a lot there that Nuno can see. Um, but I thought Max Kilman played okay yesterday. Yeah, bearing so in some mind, people to, say he played rubbish. Yeah, bearing oh, in mind, yeah, bearing in mind he had to. He played in centre half where he was a bit shaky. But I thought he looked great on the ball. To be honest, at times. Um, and, and that throw in as well for the exactly, and then he play, and then playing at left wing back, which none of us have seen him play, a totally unfamiliar role. I'd assume he brought Vinagre off to sort of keep him fresh Sunday. Yeah. Um, but I, again, I thought he looked okay. Uh, with with Mac, Max Kilmer, you can you can see that he was a football player with some of the stuff he does, and for a player that's not really ever played at this top level, that he's come. Uh, his comfortability is that word Comf comfortability his comfortability on the ball if it's not it's, it sounds good yeah it does uh, sounds great to his comfortability on the ball is um, <laughs> is, is, is good he's a good player yeah and he's out of contract in the summer as well isn't he so I still can't understand why won't, that's not been announced yet though it's, it's, weird. it's obvious he's obviously signing a new one because he won't be playing yeah yeah. I'd it was the same with Otto Sauer you'd know why he was coming on the Europa League without signing a new deal yeah, so I expect that to be wrapped up in the next couple of months and I think they should do because he's, he's He's 21, he's young, he's still learning his trade. He's obviously a very quick, quick learner and he's English as well, so it fills that homegrown, homegrown quota. Yeah, yeah. As you, as you said earlier with, with uh, Gibbs White, but yeah, I thought he did really well and, and he's impressed every time I've seen him, so I don't think he's going to be dislodging Bolly from the side anytime soon, but he's a very, very, very good backup to well, our. You know, or you don't know because, well, yeah, not Bolly, I don't think, but you don't. Know, yeah, yeah, the other centre back position, I don't think any of us for a long time saw Bennett being dropped unless we signed someone new. And that changed so quickly this summer, and we've seen, and um, we didn't know whether Sais would play or Dendonk would play as a centre back. Obviously, he's opted for Sais. All he needs is, um, you know, a suspension or a, a knock for someone, and he comes in and impresses. And that's all he needs. So, he's a good player, as you say. He's young. A lot of defenders don't peak until much later in their career. So, for a, 
a player of his age. You could you could arguably see him going out on loan, but I don't think he need, Wolves need him to because he, he he does have that quality. And I think uh, he's a player now that Nuno, if if needed, can rely upon him a lot more. You can definitely depend on him, and he's got the he's got the build, hasn't he? He needs to maybe bulk out a tiny little bit. Uh, I don't think he's over reliant on his pace, but he's you know you look at him and he's he's what six foot five, isn't he? Six yeah, foot he's four, a big guy, yeah, man. He's a big bloke. He wins most of his headers, but could just do do being a little bit more physical. But that'll come with age, that, and I'm sure that'll be working. I mean, you've only got to look at, at the size of Adamus when he came into what he's now. And yeah. Obviously, it's, it, that's ridiculous. That transformation. I know he was a massive, massive wedge geezer when he come from Middlesbrough, but if you look at him from when he signed to now, he's like twice the size. Yeah, yeah, and it's worked though. It's not like it's been a bad thing for Adama. It's definitely costed it. I remember when he put oh, that yeah. like he looks a different beast. So uh, he's it's absolute crack of shots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's worked with Adama, and um, yeah, I think I think the physical and the medical side of the the staff sort of know what's good for for what players. So yeah, he's a big guy. Does he need possibly does need to bulk up? Uh, I'm no expert on it, but possibly does need to. Um, <laughs> but yeah, good player nonetheless. Yeah, so. That's that's the game. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Um, let's talk about the experience because I know some fans who haven't been who weren't lucky enough to get a ticket or couldn't go out because of work commitments or you know money. Yeah. Um, try and kind of round up what what it, what it was like to be there and um, what the stadium was like getting there and stuff. So it was um, it's a nice stadium, but it's it's one of those classic European stadiums where all right when you're in your seat it's like wow this is a great stadium, but there's nothing. There's nothing around it. There's nothing. In it. It's just like a shell, isn't it? There's no like concourse or anything. I mean, we paid yeah. five, five euro for a hot dog cold yesterday. Hot it was dog. a cold hot dog and uh, no alcohol, free alcohol, free beer, and uh, all kind of caged in it. It all looked very makeshift, but nice stadium. But you compare it to like the infrastructure stadiums in 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 the UK, it's completely different gravy, isn't it? Yeah, well, uh, yeah. I mean, um, the ground itself is nice. I mean, we didn't really get. I think if it was full, it would have been a different story. It would have been really interesting with the atmosphere and stuff. Um, but I think it was like that at Braga, though. I don't know what, we can go on to that. You know, that's a whole different side oh, of things. But Braga. there was no real concourse there, was there really? You just sort of walk out out the stand yeah, and then you're on like to the shell, stairs. isn't it? It's yeah. just like concrete shell. Yeah, yeah. So it, I think this English side of that is very, very different and, and how English people enjoy the games and, and have the match day experience is completely different. I think the club in, in general got the security and got the, the plans a lot a lot better this time. I think they learnt massively from that game against Braga. Obviously, since day one, as soon as we were drawn, they tightened up on everything with tickets and so on, didn't they? So I know, I know, a number of all fans were still in the home end, but um, kicked off, didn't it? All the right police yeah, came. Yeah, but I think I think people knew that to behave themselves a lot more when it, you know, Braga dealt with it sort of well from their point of view in terms of the ticket allocation because they put all the Wolves fans they together at once name one tier. but the the worst thing about that was the police and the security of it ridiculous whereas this whereas you know yesterday was was a lot better and um, the, other than when people getting a bit pissed off at the end that we had to um, that we were being held back I get that was, though yeah, I get yeah, that. yeah there was there was no no trouble whatsoever but as a ground it, it, it was nice to see and it, it is nice when, at these European games you still you know, you'd hope that Wolves will it'll happen again the next year within the, the next season or so. But you don't know; it may ne- never happen again. So mm. the 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 you know the, the what am I trying to say here? The um, the experience of going to different grounds, watching Wolves, it is it, different. It's interesting yeah. as well. I think it does make you appreciate kind of like I know a lot of English grounds get sticking like stewards and stuff, but you know. It's, you would, I don't think you'd get the problems that we've had abroad that you, you would in the UK in an away game. So it does, does make you appreciate that. But apparently there was a little bit of trouble after the game where away fans in the home end had obviously left the stadium. I think a few Espanol fans had set about them, which obviously is, isn't great. But yeah. it was uh, it, it was organised really well. It wasn't organised chaos like at Braga. Um, but we were all t- told to take our passport to the okay, stadium. Hell, yeah, what a waste of time that was. Yeah. Um, which, you know, we've, if you've ever been to Barcelona or if you've ever experienced it, you know it's rife for pickpockets and you can sell a passport for X amount of money. You know, it's wallets, phones and passports, what they're after. And to, to have to take the passport all the way to Espanyol, which is outside of Barcelona, um, and, to, and to be told you're going to need it for checks on the gate, literally nothing was checked. So that pissed me off a little bit because, you know... Well, I can't even think, uh, uh, from the point that we left our taxi... 
to go to the ground. I can't even remember a point where they would have checked my passport. The first stop was the wall steward telling us where to go, and the second one was when you were held for about 20, 30 people, in, and then you were let in. They can't check all that, so I really don't understand where they even would have checked the passport. So, unless they were just doing that to scare, to scare certain fans from buying tickets or whatever, mm. but because there wasn't even names on tickets anyway, so yeah. I don't really know yeah, what they were trying to achieve. The time I got my ticket checked was at, at the turnstile, and it was like three or four points before that where. Yeah, yeah. I, I I was searched. Um, my yeah, person was searched. I was then allowed into the area by another steward, but literally nothing, nothing was checked. No, no, it was strange. A bit frustrating that is, I think. But um, it's just what it is. I think they have got to get the security measures in check. And I think outside of things that Wolves have dealt with most things pretty well with the European trip, to be fair. But the the journey as a whole has has, has been good. Um, as I say, nice stadium, no real, other than the first night, obviously, that we weren't here, yeah. no real trouble, but I think, again, a lot of that was uh, police and, and beer instigated, but, yeah. Um, yeah, nice place, nice area, decent ground, and uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll uh, go on yeah. to talk about our, our next opponents Yeah, I mean, I've been to Barcelona a few times, it's an amazing city, it's, it's great, even... You are you are welcomed as English. And last night after the game, there were still fans out in, in the square on La Rambla, um, drinking, singing. Not no worries whatsoever no. compared to the, the Wednesday night. It, it it was brilliant and it was so good to see so many Wolves fans over here without a ticket enjoying themselves. I mean, I'd struggle to do it without a ticket. I'd, yeah, I don't think I'd, I'd, be I'd able feel to. like I was missing out. But yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a really good experience. It's always always a tiring one, isn't it? But. We could be doing it all again in a couple of weeks after walls were drawn to Olympiakos, Olympiosos. <laughs> <Yeah. you're, laughs> Olympiakos in um, in the Europa League last 16. I was, um, Dave's gone to the new camp, haven't you, this afternoon. I, yeah, I went to the, the camp, uh, yeah. Sagrada Familia and had a couple of beers outside my favourite caf and watched the uh, Watched the draw on my phone, I was punching the air and I saw Olympiakos and the bar thought, what's this dickhead doing here? <laughs> um, but yeah, I saw. Um, Copenhagen and last come out and I was like oh, they're yeah. two that I wanted really mm. I know it wasn't last it was um, Istanbul Istanbul Bezier, Bezier, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I saw Olympiakos and then Wolves and I was like that's a fantastic draw for us um, certainly winnable isn't it yeah definitely I mean they are top of uh, the Greek league they've got a bit of a cushion there um, got a Portuguese manager as well it's the Pedence derby isn't it yeah yeah but yeah Daniel Pedence obviously he's left there in January you know they they they're not going to be a crap team. You know they beat Arsenal across two legs. Yeah, um, Arsenal are shit. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there will still be a tough game. Um, normally they do say being at home in the second leg gives you that sort of advantage. Well, I think in our case uh, for the Espanyol game, it gave us a huge advantage in uh, you know knowing what we had to take and who we had to take and how we had to prepare. For yeah, that I think if we lose in Olympiacos, the nerves at Mon you. Yeah, I know. And I think as long as we can get some sort of away goal and positive result, whether we do drop po- like what say drop points, we draw the game in the first leg. Um, but I think getting that away goal in the Pretty first sure. leg is is key. But um, I was saying it yesterday. I said over two legs, genuinely. Um, you know, we're talking about the Olympiacos cost draw, but over two legs, I, I you know, Wolves would give a difficult game to anyone in the world. Honestly, they would because you know. People could laugh at that and then they'd see that. But, you know, we've um, you see in the Champions League this week, Manchester City have got the better of Real Madrid. You know, <laughs> we beat City twice this season. So, therefore, we yeah. are better than Real Madrid. Yeah, we are. The conversation over the taxi driver last night yeah. and again he looked at me like, who's his dickhead? Yeah. It's but, you no, know, I, I genuinely, over two legs, we'd, we, uh, any team in the world would, you know, we'd give a game to. Um, I, and I believe that, you know, but it's um Olympiacos game is is good for Wolves. Uh, there were tougher ties in there. You your Romas, your Inters, Sevillas, your Manchester United. That's the one I didn't want. Yeah. United. Even Rangers, you know, have, have proved that they can, you know, can upset a couple of teams. So yeah, Olympiacos is a good draw for Wolves and um but kick off times are stupid. Yeah, um, let's let's talk through that. What what day is it the, the first game? I'll just get my calendar up on my phone. Um, um it's the it's the twelfth, isn't it? Is it the twelfth of March? Twelfth of March, yeah. And that's at Olympia. So that kickoff is eight pm UK time, ten pm their time, and then the reverse leg at Molyneux on the nineteenth of March, which is 5:55. absolutely ridiculous. Five fifty-five kickoff. Now, 
how how are fans going to get to that game if you're someone who, who both games are stupid yeah. I really don't understand what the thinking is like every every away game that we've had in the Europa League so Besiktas was an early kickoff Slovan Bratislava was an early kickoff and Braga was an early kickoff all the ones at Molyneux were what eight pm and that's always worked for everyone the live the um the lifestyle over here like this in mm. in Europe is completely different to sort of the UK. Um, so it, that that worked, but the fact that fan, fans are a lot of fans that come from l- long distances, even fans in Wolverhampton will struggle to yeah. get to the ground for that time uh, without having to book time off. You know, a lot of people general work, uh, general you know Not nine to, to five. five yeah, you know, you, you finish at five o'clock for anyone to get across to to Molyneux, You know, ideally you're going to be there what fifteen minutes before. So get there for a half a half past twenty two. You're going to be cutting it fine wherever you pl- come from. I don't. I'd love to hear the reasoning behind it, but it would have made sense if the game was eight pm, Molyneux, five fifty five in Greece because they're two hours in front of us, so yeah. it would have been seven fifty five exactly. eight o'clock. I just I can't fathom it. I I cannot simply cannot get my head around it. And I mean I don't think I'm going to go to the 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 game in Olympiacos just through work commitments and uh, short short notice and stuff. But. Um, I suppose the only shining light from that is it allows fans to travel on the Thursday morning and um, and come back on the Friday because they've got enough time before yeah. them to get to the game. But that's the only kind of shining light that can really come out of this. It's just really poor. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I don't understand that. But you know, um, it'll be interesting to, to to see both both allocations. Really, I've, I have already seen a number of Wolves fans book flights to to Greece and so on. Uh, I think but, Arsenal got eighteen hundred or sixteen hundred. Yeah, yeah, but I think it, a lot of people will be in a similar position to ourselves, really, where obviously the the quick turnaround and work commitments and stuff like that. You know, because a lot of these you have to you do have to book at least two days off, mm. be it a Thursday, Friday, and whatever. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting, but definitely a winnable tie. Obviously, we've got Pedence off them. Um, played played all right yesterday. Um, got a couple of decent players, Portuguese manager, so he he knows really what he's Portuguese keeper, so isn't he? Yeah, Jose, Jose Sar, Sar, yeah. as well, he used to play. Valbuena, yeah. Marseille, so. was it Marseille, Lyon? Yeah, Marseille. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly in both, I can't, I can't mm. think. Um, but yeah, they're going to know, you know, any anyone, any Portuguese player or manager worth their salt is going to know a bit about Wolves. And, yeah. you know, well, you've it's got, Portugal you, FC, isn't it? Yeah, so. you've got some of the best Portuguese players, two of the best Portugal, Portuguese players of all time in our squad, so... Um, yeah, never as a Matinia. No, no. Patricio, Patricio, <laughs> <Matinia. laughs> <Exactly. laughs> But it's yeah, de- it's definitely it's definitely winnable. And um, again, if we were saying we wanted kind of uh, Copenhagen, weren't we? Well, oh, I don't know. Stop, stole back in to come back to Molyneux. That would have been funny. Uh, big stall, a big bold dickhead. <laughs> come back to Molyneux. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, any, anyone else? I know a lot of people are saying, "Oh, United have got the easy draw." But I remember, you know, Laska have been causing some serious upsets, man. And you so. are an avid follower of the Austrian yeah, League, aren't you? Yeah, mate, I'm a big you follower. You devote your Sundays to that. No, very happy shoes. No, no like, I you used around, to. I'm watching the Austrian Prem, mate. No, no, I, I put <laughs> before that I wanted them, and everyone's like, "No, literally, like they've been." I think they were in Sporting's group and like Sporting out. Mm. Like, they've been getting some decent results at the so. top as well. I mean, we've all seen the, the heroics. I know they got fed through to the Europa League, but. Um, Red Bull Salzburg have caused a few upsets, especially the, the game at, at Anfield. Exactly, where they, yeah, they, yeah. They, I know they didn't win the game, but they played brilliantly. And you think of that thing, we want to you want to kind of avoid them in the in the next round. But then obviously Lasker above them in the league, so yeah, they're a good team. And like they're, they're, there's a lot of good ties in there outside of our, our game. There's a lot of good ties for Wolves. To a couple of the big teams playing each other, um, so I'll be genuinely, yeah, genuinely, it will be interesting. And uh, if we can, if, if we can win this game and go through to the quarterfinals, anything's possible. It is. Did you ever in your lifetime ever think that you'd see Wolverhampton Wanderers as the third favourite to win a European competition? Because I know I didn't. Nah, I didn't think. I didn't think we'd uh, ever ever be in Europe full stop um, I, like obviously when I was in League One got to the Championship you, I mean you don't really think about it though do you like when you're lower end of the Championship you, you don't you'll dream about it but you don't think one day Wolves will be in a European competition but it's just the jump and how quick, the quick we've done it it's, it's ridiculous really like um, 
one small fact could have changed. Nuno couldn't couldn't may not have joined Wolves or may have been sacked earlier, and we could have been sat in a hotel in Reading doing a podcast after Reading away or something like that. You, you know what I mean? So it is crazy how many how things have changed so quickly. So I mean, we've um, only yeah. started doing this because Wolves have been doing well, haven't we? That's, <laughs> that's, yeah, I was waiting for someone yeah. to bring that up. To be fair, <laughs> yeah. Uh, to be fair though, when we started, I mean, we we were two years old. The other day, it was in the it was in the championship, in the championship season. So if we are on the club's coattails, if anyone is, he's probably us but oh yeah. uh, well I'm sure people will say that Aussie United fan of swimming before because it always comes out doesn't it you see all these old vloggers and stuff like Mark Goldbridge apparently he's a Norwich fan that expressions is a QPR fan yeah. but I've seen pictures of Dave and he was a little nipper in his wolf shirt yeah. so it's in a video as well but that's for another with a Man United post yeah with like Ronaldo yeah. post <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we wrap it up um, I need everyone to kind of d- well download the Pitch Football app yep. on the App Store um, they're our new channel sponsors for the for the podcast a great bunch of guys and they've got a really good app uh, you may have seen it on our socials where you predict teams you can kind of go onto there uh, predict your teams look at the scores um, but we'll also be doing doing a little video message on there that um, you, you can kind of you can look at and you can reply and send yours in and who knows you might even get your, your replies read out on the next show but yeah Pitch Football app on the App Store make sure you download that uh, big thanks to those guys as usual but anything else you'd like to add Dave before we go? No that's all um, people can let us know if they're watching on, on YouTube let us know their thoughts on the uh, on the draw and if you're listening on Apple and, and whatever or Spotify if wherever you can leave a review please do so but if you've got anything that you want to say uh, about the pod, you can always tweet us at Talking Walls. Okay, and where can people find you, should they wish? Uh, people can find me at Dave Azopardi, A-Z-Z-O-P-A-R-D-I, on Twitter. Um, uh, yeah, it's the main one. And M. Cooper writes for me. But until next time, Spurs away this Sunday. Yeah. Um, podcast will be back in um, a week, week or after. two. Yeah, yeah. so ago. So until then, enjoy yourself. Stay safe if you're still in Barcelona, and we'll catch you soon. See you guys. <laughs>